Welcome to an English language class with Madam Gan. This lesson is for Form 4 and we are using the textbook Full Plus Plus 4. We are learning Unit 4 and the topic is being a team. The team, people and culture. Before we begin, let's look at the learning standards or the objectives. So we have reading 3.2.1, read a variety of suitable print and digital text to investigate and analyze national issues. Listening 1.1.5, understand independently more complex questions on a wide range of familiar topics. And then speaking 2.1.2, Ask about and explain causes and consequences of actions, events, and simple processes. Writing 4.1.5 Organize, sequence, and develop ideas within a text of several paragraphs on familiar topics. And then we have the complementary skills. Speaking 2.1.4 Explain and justify own point of view. Listening 1.1.2 Understand independently specific information and details in a standard text on a wide range of familiar topics. And then reading 3.1.6, recognize with support typical features at word, sentence and text levels of an increased range of genres. Dear pupils, let's begin our lesson. So here you see eight teenage problems. So these are the problems that teenagers face today. They are usually related to. So you have to fill in the missing letters. So here, for example, you have S, L, F, E, S, T, E, E. There's a missing letter there. So try to fill in the missing letters. Let's look at the answers. So the first problem for teenagers, self, esteem and body image. And then you have stress, you have bullying, you have depression, you have cyber addiction, you have drinking and smoking, you have defiant behavior and peer pressure and competition. Now let's look at our lesson. So the first one we're going to do reading. So first you have to discuss with your partners or friends in the class. The first question, what's the most popular type of music with things in your country? Second question, what do you know about hip hop? So you can discuss these two questions with your friends. And then for B, read the text quickly and match the headings A, B, C, D, E, F, G with the paragraphs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are two extra headings which you do not need to use. Okay, so now you're going to read and also listen to a passage. So the title is More Than Just Beats and Rhymes. So a brief history of hip hop. Four B. Read. B. Read the text quickly and match the headings A to G with the paragraphs one to five. There are two extra headings which you do not need to use. More than just beats and rhymes. A brief history of hip hop. Hip hop is commonly known as a type of music. However, where did it begin? If you ask someone who Clive Campbell is, they probably wouldn't know. Yet without him, there would be no hip-hop. The roots of hip-hop go back to Jamaican immigrants in New York City in the 1960s. 
Young people there grew up listening to the rhythms of funk and soul. This music was great for social events that needed a DJ who chose and played popular songs. There was also an MC who entertained guests between songs by telling jokes and inventing rhymes. Hip hop was born on a Friday night in 1973 at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, an apartment block in the Bronx. Clive, aka Herc, who was a DJ at a gathering there, noticed that the guests liked it when there was an instrumental break in a song, so he decided to make the breaks longer by playing the same section of drum beat over and over again. He also played two records at once and mixed the two rhythms together. People loved it. In fact, so many people came that the party had to be moved outside to Cedar Park. Herc had helped invent a new kind of popular music. After his debut, Herc became Cool Herc, the most famous DJ of the era, known as the old school. The early DJs also came up with techniques that many hip-hop artists would use in the future, such as scratching. This involves moving a vinyl record back and forth while it is playing. Meanwhile, MCs were turning their rhymes into spoken word poetry, or rap. DJ Africa Bambata gave the musical movement the name hip-hop after the nonsense words used by MCs. During this period, other elements of hip-hop evolved, like graffiti and breaking. Break dancers would entertain crowds at these gatherings. The dancers could be very competitive as two rivals tried to outdo each other on the floor. In the 80s and 90s, hip-hop became popular across the USA. Bands such as Public Enemy had hits with songs that protested against different issues. Many hip-hop artists today still rap about issues such as poverty and violence. On the west coast of the USA, hip-hop became known in cities like San Francisco. Hit rappers such as Ice-T and Dr. Dre developed their own style and helped make the music popular across the country. Hip-hop has come a long way since the block parties in the Bronx. Today, if you travel to any country in the world, you will find a local hip-hop culture. But one thing hasn't changed. Fans still can't get enough of those beats and rhymes. Now let's look at the headings. So you have A, the gathering that became a legend. B, hip-hop goes global. C, popular brands of today. D, hip-hop culture begins to develop. E, cool nights in the city. F. Rapping techniques and G. The message spreads across the nation. So there are um, five passages here. So hip hop is commonly known as a type of music. However, where did it begin? So let's look at the first one, the first paragraph. So the answer is E. So the heading for paragraph one is E cool nights in the city and for paragraph 2 the heading is a the gathering that became a legend and then for paragraph 3 the heading is d hip-hop culture begins to develop and then next we have paragraph 4 paragraph 4 the heading is g the message spreads across the nation. And for the last paragraph, the heading is B. Hip hop goes global. Let's continue with the next exercise. So read again and write T for true or F for false. So number one, we have when organizing gathering, both a DJ and an MC were needed. So the answer is true. Hack began his career as an MC. So answer is false. Hack came up with hip hop when he realized people didn't like the music he was playing. So answer is false. The first hip hop party spread to a park. Answer is true. Hip hop got its name from the lyrics of a song. So answer is false. At parties, break dancers competed against each other. Answer is true. Lots of hip-hop songs 
which had to do with social issues became hits? So answer is true. Now let's look at another exercise. Look at the highlighted words in the text and try to guess what they mean. Then match them with the meanings 1 to 9 below. So the first one, the state of being poor. So answer is poverty. Number two, the place or culture where somebody or something comes from the origin. So answer is roots. Three, a period of history. So answer is error. Part of something. Section. A person that competes with another. Rival. Do or say something publicly because you disagree. Answer is protest. Do better than someone else. So answer is outdo. A person who has come to live in a country they are not from. So answer is immigrant. A person invited to a house or an event. So answer is guess. Let's look at the next exercise. Can you name any famous hip hop group in your country? So maybe you can mention this group. Their, their name is Lawala Familia. So this is Malaysian hip hop group. Can you think of any other type of music which has its own culture? So answer is yes. You have rock music. Rock music has had a major influence on culture, fashion and social attitudes. Now let's look at the project. Think of a type of music. Do some research on the internet and find information about its history. Make a PowerPoint presentation of the type of music you have chosen and its history and show it to the class. Dear students, uh, you are going to do another reading. So this is a passage. It is from the novel Oliver Twist. So have you read Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist? If so, did you like it? Okay, what do you know or can you guess about life in England in the 19th century? How do you think poor or rich people lived? Later, you're going to read an extract from the adapted version of the novel Oliver Twist. So look at the pictures. Can you guess what's happening? What was life like for an orphan at the workhouse? Read and check your answers. This is an extract from the novel Oliver Twist. So the first question is look at the picture. So guess what is happening. So you can say that Oliver Twist is asking the master for some more soup. And then the next question, what was life like for an orphan at a workhouse? So you can say that life for an orphan at a workhouse was really hard because they did not get enough food and were treated really bad. Dear students, you can read the novel Oliver Twist or the comic version here. Just scan the QR codes to download. So happy reading! Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens At last, it was evening. The large stone hall of the workhouse filled with hungry, skinny, young orphans dressed in filthy rags. Perhaps the word hungry doesn't accurately describe their grumbling, empty little stomachs. Starving would probably be more suitable. They had three meals a day, which consisted of only one bowl, and no more, of watery, tasteless soup except on special occasions when they enjoyed a ten tiny piece of bread, too. Moments after the food was served, it disappeared. The boys licked bowls, spoons and fingers and searched busily for a splash that they hadn't noticed. Because of this, the bowls never needed fifteen cleaning. Then they stared, as they always did, at the huge copper pot that held the soup. 
it appeared that that evening was no different from any other. It was, though. Before dinner, all the boys had held a meeting twenty and had made a decision. They couldn't suffer any longer. They had to act and it was Oliver Twist who was chosen to perform the task. First, the boys whispered to each other, then they winked at Oliver. The boy next to him nudged him and told him to go and ask for more food. It was time. Perhaps it was the hunger, or the misery that comes with it that gave him courage. He rose from the table and walked up to the master, bowl and spoon in hand, and said. Asterisk please, sir, I want some more. The whole room fell silent. The master's face turned white, not believing what he was hearing, he stared at Oliver for a few long seconds, speechless. All eyes were on the master, half fear, half hope. What, he said angrily. Without hesitating, again Oliver asked if he could have some more soup. The master was furious and did not reply. He raised his ladle high, not to serve more soup, but to hit poor Oliver violently on the head. The men in charge of the workhouse were shocked when the master rushed into their room. I beg your pardon, sir. Oliver Twist asked if he could have some more. They quickly decided that they had to do something at once. The next morning, there was a poster at the gate of the workhouse offering five pounds to anyone who would take Oliver Twist off their hands. Let's move on to the exercises. The first one is read the text again and answer the questions. Choose A, B, C or D. Question 1. What's the main message of the first paragraph? A. The food was awful. B. The children needed new clothes. C. The children didn't get enough food. D. The children looked forward to special occasions. So the answer is C. The children didn't get enough food. For question 2, the bowls didn't need cleaning after the children finished eating because A. The soup tasted good B. The soup disappeared C. The children ate from the copper pot D. The children cleaned everything with their tongues So the answer is D. The children cleaned everything with their tongues For question 3, what did the other boys want Oliver to do? A. Find a solution. B. Eat more food. C. Make a request. D. Act in a performance. So answer will be make a request. Question 4. The first time Oliver asked for more soup, the master didn't react, was shocked, started shouting, hit Oliver on the head. So answer will be was shocked. Question 5. What does ladle in line 39 mean A. Pot B. Hand C. Voice D. Spoon So answer will be spoon What did the people responsible for the workhouse want to do with Oliver? So A. Punish him B. Get rid of him C. Help him escape D. Give him one more chance So the answer is get rid of him Next exercise Match the highlighted words below they are from the text with their meanings. Then check your answers in the dictionary. So we have eight highlighted words. Often, Rex, Stare, Whisper, Wink, Nudge, Courage and Speechless. Then we have the meanings. A. To quickly close and open one eye as a signal to somebody. B. O. Torn clothes. C. Not able to speak because you are very hungry, and sorry, angry, surprised or others. D. To give a little push to somebody, especially with your elbow. E. The ability to do something difficult or dangerous without showing fear. F. A child whose parents have died. G. To speak very quietly so that other people cannot hear you. H. To look at something or someone for a long time without moving your eyes. So let's get the answers. Often will be F. A child whose parents have died. Number two, Rex. Are all the torn clothes? B. Three, stare. Stare will be 
cage to look at something or someone for a long time without moving your eyes. Four, whisper. Whisper will be G to speak very quietly so that other people cannot hear you. Five, wink. Wink is A to quickly close and open one eye as a signal to somebody. Nudge. Nudge is D to give a little push to someone, especially with your elbow. Courage. Courage is E. The ability to do something difficult or dangerous without showing fear. Then number eight will be speechless. Speechless is C. Not able to speak because you are very angry, surprised or others. Next, you have to discuss why do you think the master hit Oliver? And then another question, what do you think will happen next? So try to guess what happened next. Then for F, look at the adjective furious in line 38. What do you think it means? So furious actually means very angry. Now let's look at strong and weak adjectives. So strong adjectives are a stronger version of other more common adjectives, often called weak adjectives. Example, furious means very angry. Before weak adjectives, we often use adverbs such as very, really, extremely, incredibly, terribly, and a little or a little bit to describe their intensity. To describe the intensity of strong adjectives, we use adverbs such as really, completely, absolutely, and totally. Let's try to understand the strong and the weak adjectives. So adjectives are words that describe the quality of something. There are different kinds of adjectives in English. Adjectives can be gradable and non-gradable, which is called extreme adjectives. So gradable or weak adjective means different degrees or level of the quality. We can use these adjectives with some adverbs, a bit, very, really, slightly, extremely, quite and others to show the degree of the quality. For example, cool is a weak or gradable adjective. It could be a bit cold or very cold. So let's look at the sentence. Tom is very cold. Now let's look at non-gradable or extreme or strong adjectives. So they do not have different degree or level of quality. We can also use these adjectives with some adverbs like absolutely, completely, really, mainly, totally, utterly and others. Extreme adjectives, non-gradable adjective mean very plus the adjective. For example, freezing is a strong or is strong or ungradable adjective. So freezing is stronger than cold. So it is very, very cold. So it can't be a bit freezing, right? So the sentence should be, Sarah is absolutely freezing. Here you have other examples. For example, big, huge. So huge means very big. Angry, you have furious. Bad, you have awful, terrible. Big can be huge, gigantic, pretty, gorgeous, beautiful, clean, spotless, cold, freezing, crowded, packed, nice, lovely, dirty, filthy, funny, hilarious, good, fantastic, excellent, hot, boiling, disappointed, Gutted, hungry, starving, interesting, fascinating, old, ancient, tasty, delicious, pretty, gorgeous, sad, miserable, 
scary, terrifying, happy, elated, small, tiny, surprising, astounding, tired, exhausted, ugly, hideous, long, endless, expensive, exorbitant. Now let's look at the next exercise. Read the first paragraph of the text again and find adjectives which mean very thin. So it is skinny, very dirty, filthy, very hungry, starving, very small, tiny. Now replace the strong adjectives in the sentences 1 to 7 below with the appropriate adverb and the weak adjective in the box. So here we have surprised, interesting, hungry, dirty, hot, beautiful, angry. And in the sentences, we have furious, boiling, fascinating, gorgeous, astonished, filthy, and starving. So let's look at number one. I was furious with myself when I lost my mobile phone. So the sentence, okay, with the word furious, you can write incredibly angry for second and uh, the second sentence boiling is boiling outside we should go for a swim so you can write extremely hot number three i watched a fascinating documentary about dolphin last night so answer is really interesting number four my cousin stephanie has gorgeous blue eyes so gorgeous very beautiful Five, I was astonished to hear that Frank got fired. So answer will be terribly surprised. Number six, your hands are filthy. You had better wash them before dinner. So answer will be extremely dirty. Number seven, I haven't had anything for breakfast and I'm starving. So starving will be very hungry. Students, we're going to move on to the grammar lesson. So we have conditional sentences type 1, conditional sentences type 2, and 0 conditional. So for conditional sentences type 1, you have the word if or unless. So let's look at the three sentences. If you need any help, ask me. Tony may do some graffiti on his garage wall if his parents don't mind. Unless I repair my laptop, I won't be able to be the DJ at your party. Now for conditional sentences type 2. How would you feel if you won a song contest and became famous? If I were you, I'd tell my parents what happened. Next, zero conditional. If you eat a lot of junk food, you put on weight. When you heat ice, it melts. Let's look at the rules for conditional sentences type 1. We use conditional sentences type 1 for something which is likely to happen in the present or future. So you have the if clause, if plus present simple, and the main clause, future, will, or model verbs can, may, might, must, or should, and imperative. Let's look at the sentences. If I see James, I'll give him his book back. So this is future. If you want a pet, you must promise to take care of it. So this is model verbs. If you go to the supermarket, buy some milk. So this is imperative. Let's look at conditional sentences type 2. We use conditional sentences type 2 for unreal or imaginary situations which are unlikely to happen in the present or the future. So they are unlikely to happen. So you have if clause, if plus past simple and the main clause would, could plus infinitive. Let's look at the sentence. If I won, so won will be the past simple. If I won the lottery, I would 
buy. Buy would be the infinitive. I will buy a farm in the country. You could lose some weight. So could here plus the lose. So this is could plus infinitive. If you went on a diet. So if plus past simple will be went. Look at the note here. In conditional sentences type 2, were is often used instead of was in the if clause in all persons. So for all persons, if I were rich, not if I was rich. So this is for conditional sentences type 2. So if I were rich, I would live in a luxurious house. We use if I were you to express an opinion or to give advice. If I were you, I wouldn't buy it. Unless can be used instead of if, not in all conditional sentences. I won't buy this car unless you agree. I won't buy this car if you don't agree. When the if clause comes before the main clause, the two clauses are separated by a comma. Now let's look at zero conditional. So zero conditional if or when plus present simple. And then you have the main clause present simple. The zero conditional is used to talk about general truth or facts. So if or when you press the button, so press will be present simple. The machine starts. So here is present simple. Now let's try this exercise. We write the sentences starting with the words given. So let's look at the first sentence. Tina doesn't play a musical instrument, so she can't be a member of our band. If Tina played a musical instrument, she could be a member of our band. Number two, people get thirsty when they don't drink enough water. If people don't drink enough water, they get thirsty. Number three, we won't buy the CD if it isn't on sale. Unless the CD is on sale, we won't buy it. I'm not able to sleep because the bed isn't comfortable. If the bed were comfortable, I could be able to sleep. Number five, play music with a strong beat. Otherwise, people won't dance. If you don't play music with a strong beat, people won't dance. Or you can write, if you play music with a strong beat, people will dance. Now let's move on to vocabulary. Complete with the correct form of words in the boxes. So you have two sentences here and then you have two words popular and famous. Let's look at the first one. Hip hop is probably the most popular type of music at our school. Number two, my cousin is in a band, but they aren't very famous yet. Next, we have words common, usual and normal. Last night, I had my usual Friday night dinner of fish and chips. Number four, it's very common for the school president to be the best student at the school. Number five, for victims of crime, it takes time for their life to return to normal. Next, we have three words here, include, contain and involve. Number six, does the price include accommodation and meals? Number seven, being a writer involves spending a lot of time in front of a computer. Number eight, they opened, so this is past ten, they opened the box to see what it contained. Now we have nine, ten and eleven. So we have three options, grow, grow up and bring up. Number nine, when my brother grows up. 
So you have to write gross. He wants to be a football player. Number 10, my neighbor grows vegetable because this is singular. My neighbor grows vegetables in his garden. So you have to write gross and they always taste great. 11. My grandmother had, so this is past 10, a difficult life as she had to bring up five children. And then the last questions, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we have four words, same, similar, like, and alike. In the UK, things start voting at the age of 18. It's the Answer will be same in Ireland. 13. George and Thomas are twins, but they don't look alike. Can you hear that? It sounds like a wolf, but they don't live in this part of the country. I like hanging out with Kelly because we have similar interests. Next, we have words lively, alive and life. So let's look at the sentences. I forgot to feed the fish at the weekend. Luckily, they are still alive. I've got all Coldplay CDs, but I've never seen them perform live. The youth club is a lively place on Saturday evenings. Now we are going to do listening lesson. Before you listen, read the definition of peer pressure and discuss the questions. Peer pressure means feeling that you have to do something so that you can be accepted by your peers and then feel that you fit in. So these are some of the questions. Do your peers influence your choices or your decisions, the way you dress or the way you behave? How often do you find yourself in situations where you feel peer pressure? Do you find it difficult to resist peer pressure? Do you think peer pressure is always negative? Let's try to answer these questions. So the first one, do your peers influence your choices or decisions? For example, like the way you dress or the way you behave. So you can answer, if I said that they didn't, I would be lying. What my friends think about me is very important to me. And so is fitting in and being accepted. For this reason, I'm influenced by them. So maybe sometimes the way you dress is influenced by your peers. For example, if your peers are wearing a certain type of fashion, Maybe you also feel that, that you have to do the same. Okay, for question two, how often do you find yourself in situations where you feel peer pressure? You can answer, I seldom feel pressured by my peers to do something. So next, number three, do you find it difficult to resist peer pressure? Answer would be, I find it difficult to resist peer pressure when I am the only one who disagrees with the others or when no one sides with me. The last question, do you think peer pressure is always negative? We can answer, no, peer pressure can be positive when your peers are students who are mature and work hard to succeed. Listen. B. You will hear a quiz which is part of a radio program. Listen and do the quiz. Mark your answers in the boxes below. And now I hope you've got your pens ready because it's time for our weekly quiz. This week, are you a peer pressure victim? Let's find out. Question number one. A cousin of yours has come to visit. He's okay, but there's one problem. He's so unfashionable, it's embarrassing. You've made plans to go to a cafe with your friends. What do you do? Do you A. Go to the cinema with your cousin instead. B. Stay at home and watch TV with your cousin. Or C. Bring your cousin along to the cafe anyway. On to number two. 
You have a friend who's not a very good student. He really needs to pass next week's maths exam. He asks if he can sit next to you and copy from you. What do you do? Do you A. Pretend you're ill so you miss the exam? B. Let him copy? Or C. Offer to help him by studying together? Number 3. A girl in your class is running for class president. All your friends are voting for her because she's popular. However, you know that the boy running against her would be a better leader. What do you do? A. Don't vote and don't get involved. B. Vote for the boy but tell your friends you voted for the girl. C. Decide to help the boy become class president. Number 4. You're out shopping with your friend. You try on a jacket which you think looks cool, but your friend says it makes you look silly. What do you do? Do you A. Buy it, but not wear it when you go out with your friend? B. Decide not to buy the jacket because you trust your friend's taste in clothes? Or C. Buy the jacket because you like it and ignore your friend? Number 5. You're on your way to your football practice when the coolest kid in school asks you if you want to go to the mall instead of going to practice. What do you do? Do you A. Tell him you could meet him at the mall after practice? B. Miss practice and go to the mall? C. Refuse and say you'd prefer to go to practice? That's it. Now, add up your scores. One point for any A answers, no points for B answers, and two points for C answers. I'll be back after this short break to give you the results. C. Now listen to the continuation of the radio programme. What does the quiz reveal about you? Do you agree? And now the results. Right then. If your score is between 0 and 3 points, then you've got a problem. You try very hard to be accepted, and as a result you do what others want you to do, although you might not want to. Try to be more self-confident and support your own opinion more. If your score is between 4 and 7 points, you haven't got a big peer pressure problem. But that's probably because you avoid making difficult decisions and take the easy way out. Don't be afraid to have an opinion sometimes. If your score is between 8 and 10 points, then you are not a peer pressure victim. You are not afraid to speak your mind. And you usually do what you think is right. Listen. A. Listen to Stephanie talking to her friend Ian and answer the questions. Hi, Stephanie. How's it going? I've been better. Why? What's wrong? Last night I organised a surprise party for Monica, you know, the new girl in my French class. How did it go? It was a disaster. I had organised everything so well. I had invited some of her friends from her old school. Everyone was there on time. The cake was lovely. It was perfect. Sounds good. So what went wrong? Well, I opened the door, she walked into my living room, and we all shouted, surprise! Two seconds later, Monica was out the door and she hasn't spoken to me since. Not so good. Everyone went home. I stuck the cake in the fridge and I tried to call her about ten times, but she wouldn't pick up. Well, some people just don't like surprise parties. I remember my mum threw me one once and I didn't speak to her for a month. It's my fault, really. She mentioned to me once that she isn't keen on them. I should have listened to her. I just thought everyone likes a party. Apparently not. What are you going to do now? I've no idea. Maybe I'll let her calm down a bit and try to call her again tomorrow. She'll probably ring you and apologise anyway. You reckon? I hope so. This whole situation is getting me down. I'm such a fool. Listen, why don't I ring her and talk to her about it? No, she knows we're good friends and she'll think I told you to ring her because she won't answer my calls. That makes me look bad. Yeah, not a good idea. So, 
Have you still got that cake? Yeah, it's in the fridge if you want some. That's my mobile. It's Monica, at last. I told you. Hello, Monica. Listen, I'm so sorry about... Let's now look at the answers. So the first question is, who is Monica? Monica is Stephanie's friend. She is a new girl in Stephanie's French class. What are Stephanie and Ian talking about? So answer is, they are talking about a surprise party that Stephanie organized for Monica, which went wrong. B. Listen again and write T for true or F for false. Hi, Stephanie. How's it going? I've been better. Why? What's wrong? Last night, I organised a surprise party for Monica. You know, the new girl in my French class. How did it go? It was a disaster. I had organised everything so well. I had invited some of her friends from her old school. Everyone was there on time. The cake was lovely. It was perfect. Sounds good. So what went wrong? Well, I opened the door, she walked into my living room, and we all shouted, Surprise! Two seconds later, Monica was out the door and she hasn't spoken to me since. Not so good. Everyone went home. I stuck the cake in the fridge and I tried to call her about ten times, but she wouldn't pick up. Well, some people just don't like surprise parties. I remember my mum threw me one once and I didn't speak to her for a month. It's my fault, really. She mentioned to me once that she isn't keen on them. I should have listened to her. I just thought everyone likes a party. Apparently not. What are you going to do now? I've no idea. Maybe I'll let her calm down a bit and try to call her again tomorrow. She'll probably ring you and apologise anyway. You reckon? I hope so. This whole situation is getting me down. I'm such a fool. Listen, why don't I ring her and talk to her about it? No, she knows we're good friends and she'll think I told you to ring her because she won't answer my calls. That makes me look bad. Yeah, not a good idea. So, have you still got that cake? Yeah, it's in the fridge if you want some. That's my mobile. It's Monica, at last. I told you. Hello, Monica. Listen, I'm so sorry about... Just now you listen again, and now you have to answer the question. So we write D for true or F for false. So number one, the party was a disaster because nobody turned up on time. So answer is false. The party was arranged to be held at Monica's house. Answer is false. Monica refused to answer Stephanie's calls after the party. So answer is true. Ian had a similar experience to Monica's. Answer is true. Ian suggests that Stephanie calls Monica the next day. So answer is false. Stephanie thinks that Ian should call Monica. So answer is false. Monica calls Stephanie in the end. So answer is true. Now let's look at speaking lesson. Talk in pairs. Look at the picture here and then discuss the questions. Use the words or phrases in the box. So let's look at the picture. So you have the girl asking the boy, may I have my MP4 player back? So let's look at the tips. When discussing a topic, use a range of vocabulary and structures. Do not repeat the same words all the time. Let's look at the words and the phrases in the box. So you have rain, be careless, feel frustrated, on purpose or not on purpose, admit the truth, my fault or not my fault, blame somebody for doing something, feel ashamed, apologize, make up for something. So these are the questions. What do you think has happened? How does the boy feel? What do you think the boy should say to the girl? How do you think the girl will react when she finds out what happened? If you were in the same situation, what would you do? Has anything similar happen, happened to you?
Let us look at the possible answers. What do you think has happened? Well, I think it is clear from the picture that the boy accidentally dropped the girl's MP4 player in water. I don't think that he did it on purpose, but it was definitely careless of him. When you borrow other people's things, you need to be extra careful. Question 2. How does the boy feel? The boy obviously feels ashamed that he ruined the girl's MP4 player and he also uh, feels frustrated that he is unable to do something about it. What do you think the boy should say to the girl? The boy definitely needs to admit the truth and apologize to the girl. He also needs to make up for ruining it by buying her a new MP4 player. How do you think the girl will react when she finds out what happened? Well, she is sure to be very angry. She will also blame him for being very careless and ruining her MP4 player. If you were in the same situation, what would you do? If I were in the boy's position, I would buy her a new MP4 player. If I couldn't, I would save up until I could. If I were in the girl's position, I would demand that he replace it. Has anything similar ever happened to you? Nothing like this has ever happened to me. The reason is that I do not borrow things from other people. I just never, you just never know what may happen. So I avoid this type of situation altogether. However, I do lend my clothes to my siblings, but so far, they haven't ruined anything. Now let's move on to the writing lesson. Here you are going to write an essay discussing advantages and disadvantages. So let's look at the question. When you do school projects, do you prefer working in a group or do you prefer working on your own? Why? So the possible answers, I prefer working in a group because working in teams or groups increases collaboration and allows for brainstorming. As a result, more ideas are developed and productivity improves. Or you can answer, I prefer working on my own because I have my own pace and do not depend on someone else. I can also decide what to do, where and when. Advantages and disadvantages of individual work. You can work at your own pace not depending on someone else. You can decide what to do when. You can concentrate easier and work faster. If you are working on a familiar task, you can get it done quickly since there are no outside interactions and extra meetings. You get the whole credit for the work you do since you are working alone. There won't be many situations where one does less but gets the same credit with others. You get to make your own decisions. You are the sole responsible for the job. If you fail, it is your fault. There aren't any others to blame it for. You have to motivate yourself. There are no others to motivate you for getting things done. You can get bored working all by yourself. There isn't anyone to talk to, share ideas with or get help from. When you are working alone, if you get sick or need to take days off, the work will be delayed because there won't be anyone to continue it for you. Advantages and Disadvantages of Teamwork Working in teams increases collaboration and allows for brainstorming. As a result, more ideas are developed and productivity improves. Two or more people are always better than one for solving problems, finishing off difficult tasks and increasing creativity. Everyone is unique and has different skills, backgrounds, and experiences. Therefore, others in a team can help you see things from a different angle. Teamwork encourages communication between team members. For this reason, relations between employees tend to be better and over time employees learn to communicate better. In some teams, there may be members who sit back and let others do all the work. In these types of teams, Conflicts may occur and this can affect the mood of others in the team. 
Working in a team requires many meetings and these meetings, if not managed well, can go off topic and decrease the efficiency of the team. Making decisions can take longer for the sake of finding a consensus. Hence, delays occur. Now read the writing task and underline the key words. Then read the essay and answer the questions that follow. Your teacher has asked you to write an essay on the following topic. What are the advantages and disadvantages of team project work at school? So, underline the key words. Here we have write an essay. And then we also have the advantages and disadvantages of team, of team project work at school. Team project work is becoming more and more popular in schools nowadays. Some teachers and students believe that it has many advantages while others disagree. It is a fact that students benefit in many ways from doing team project work. To begin with, it is an ideal way for students to learn to cooperate and, at the same time, learn about a particular subject. In addition, each member of the team contributes different ideas, knowledge, and skills and that adds to the success of the project. Team members are also able to learn from each other this way. However, there are also certain disadvantages involved in team project work. Firstly, members of the team often become very competitive or cannot get along with each other, which can destroy the project. Secondly, team members do not always contribute equally. For instance, some do all the work while others avoid getting involved. Lastly, working in a team can be very time-consuming. As a result, students often become frustrated and think that they could do it all faster alone. On the whole, I believe that the advantages are more important than the disadvantages. From my point of view, teamwork should be encouraged in class, but there should be a balance of individual work and teamwork so that students can benefit the most. Now let's look at this exercise. What is the function of the underlying sentences in the essay? Choose A or B. A is to summarize what the writer has said in the previous paragraph or B to introduce the main idea of the paragraph. So the answer is B to introduce the main idea of the paragraph. Number two, in the second paragraph, how many advantages does the writer mention? What are they? So the writer mentions four advantages. Students learn to cooperate. Students learn about a particular subject. Each member of the team contribute different ideas, knowledge and skills. And the last one, team members learn from each other. For question three, how many disadvantages does the writer mention in the third paragraph? What are they? Then for question 4, in which paragraph does the writer express his or her opinion? So for answer, let's uh, for the disadvantages. The writer mentions three disadvantages. Members of the team often become very competitive or cannot get along with each other. Team members do not always contribute equally. Working in a team can be very time consuming. And then for question four, the writer expresses his or her opinion in the last paragraph. He or she uses the following phrase, I believe, and also from my point of view. And then the last question, which linking words or which linking phrases has the writer used? Circle them. So, to list or add point, so the words are to begin with, in addition, also. Firstly, secondly, lastly. To express contrast, 
while, however, but. To give an example, for instance, to give opinion, I believe, from my point of view. To express result consequence, as a result. To express purpose, so that. To summarize, on the whole. Now, read the essay below about whether it is necessary for students to have homework. Choose the most suitable topic sentence, A or B, for each paragraph and say why you think it is the most suitable choice. Let's look at the note. Topic sentences introduce the central idea of the paragraph. The other sentences in the paragraph develop the idea expressed in the topic sentence by expanding on it, giving examples or explaining it. Dear students, here we have four paragraphs and then the topic sentence, you have one, two, three and also four. So there are two answers. So you have A and B. Let's look at number one. So the first paragraph, most students hate the thought of it. However, most teachers think it is a necessary part of learning process. So the topic sentence is Either A or B. A. Ask a student about homework and you will be told that it is a form of punishment. B. If you ask students and teachers about homework, you will get a variety of different reactions. So the answer is B. Number two. By doing homework, students have the opportunity to practice what they have learned during the lesson. Furthermore, homework helps students to revise and consolidate knowledge. So let's look at the topic sentence. You have number two. The options are A. Those who believe that homework is necessary believe that without it, learning is not as effective as it should be. B. However, we have to admit that there are some advantages to having students do homework. So the answer is A. Paragraph 3, they feel that spending time with friends and family or doing a sport is a very important part of growing up. Moreover, as they see it, practice, revision and consolidation can be done during school hours. So let's look at the options. A, on the other hand, many believe that students spend enough time in school and need time after school for free time activities. B, in fact, there is that is only one side of the story. So answer is A. Paragraph 4. Personally, I would rather have time after school for my own interests. However, whenever teachers need to assign homework, it should be very little. So let's look at the options. A. The way I see it, students should not have to do homework, schoolwork at home. B. To sum up, homework has more advantages than disadvantages. So the topic sentence is A. Now read the writing task below and make a list of advantages and disadvantages in the table. Then write the essay. So this is the question for your essay. What are the pros and cons of team sports. Let's look at the answers. So here we have advantages or pros and also disadvantages or cons. First, let's look at the advantages. They will learn the value of teamwork. They will learn how to work in a team. They will develop the ability of trusting someone else. They will learn how to select the trustful people, they will make more friends. Now we have disadvantages or the cons. The pressure of being the best, the possibility of not being the best, possible and emotional implications of not being the best can affect the self-esteem of a child. Here are more answers. The advantages Players learn to cooperate and work towards a common goal. 
Players meet people with the same interests as them and become sociable. Players get a sense of belonging. Players learn to share feelings. Players have someone to share their successes and failures with. The disadvantages. Not all players get along with each other. Players may feel under pressure to perform well as part of a team. Players may let others down when they don't perform well. Players can become too dependent on each other. Before you start your writing, let's look at the plan and also the tips. The plan, when writing the, an essay discussing advantages and disadvantages, so you must remember to organize your ideas according to the plan below. So the plan will be you have introduction, the main part, so you have two paragraphs and the conclusion. So let's look at the introduction. Introduce the subject of the essay and both sides of the topic. So you have advantages and also disadvantages. Then the main part, so you have two paragraphs, refer to the advantages or disadvantages in separate paragraphs cover both sides of the topic equally. Then you write your conclusion. Make a general statement. Use phrases like in conclusion, to sum up, all in all, on the whole, taking everything into consideration, state your opinion. So let's look at the tips. When writing an essay discussing advantages and disadvantages, Think about the topic carefully and choose two or three ideas or points, the ones you have the most to say about. Don't try to deal with too many points. Use topic sentences to introduce each paragraph. Explain or justify each point and if possible, provide an example. Use a variety of linking words or phrases to list points at points. Express contrast. Give examples, give your opinion and others. So you look you can look at your textbook page 57. Write in a formal style and do not use short forms or contractions. Avoid introducing any new ideas in the conclusion. The pros and cons of team sports. Participating in sports has been shown to improve health, fitness, and academic performance in children while also relieving stress and teaching important lessons like good sportsmanship, teamwork and perseverance. While sports in general are clearly great for children, does it matter if they play a team or an individual sport? After all, we all know that children who are naturally drawn to individual sports like tennis, swimming or golf while others zero in on team sports like soccer, softball, or basketball. Children who play team sports show increased cooperation and teamwork and foster a sense of community. Learning to work with others when you don't always see eye to eye is an important life skill. There's also a sense of shared responsibility for the outcome, which means that having a bad day isn't the end of the world. Teammates learn to support each other through good games and bad, something that might be most important during a losing streak. Research shows that athletes have improved performance in a group, so playing team sports can encourage a child to give his or her best effort for their teammates. On the other hand, team sports require everyone in the group to have skills, fitness, and dedication to perform well. Success doesn't always correlate to individual skill or work ethic, something that can frustrate players who feel they are doing more than their teammates to achieve a shared goal. However, learning to work with others when you don't always see eye to eye is an important life skill. Interpersonal dynamics can affect team performance. Sometimes you will have to play with teammates you just don't like. And if players on a team don't get along, team performance can suffer. The same is true if teams break into cliques, while team sports can build a feeling of community, it can be hard for a player who feels left out of the group. To sum up, playing sports that demands you to be a team player is one of the best opportunities to evolve as an individual. Besides teamwork skills, team sports help you improve your health, confidence, self-esteem, willpower, and gain better life perspectives that will allow you to easily overcome future life challenges. Dear pupils, thank you for watching this video. Do remember to subscribe to my channel. It is called 
Educator Omni Tube. See you in another English language lesson. Signing off, I'm Madam Gan. Bye-bye.